In this video, we're going to take a look at the equation y equals mx plus b. Uh, on this page, we'll take a look at an example of graphing y equals 2x plus 1, and then a couple of other examples on the uh, second page. Now, the main point of this example is to illustrate the connections between the equation and the table and the graph, three different representations of y equals 2x plus 1. So I'm going to start with creating a, a graph, uh, sorry, a graph using a table of values. And I've chosen x values from negative 3 to 3. That's fairly standard. Uh, usually if you have a few negatives, a few positives, uh, a little bit below 0, a little bit above 0 is a good idea. Although there are some times when perhaps you might want to have all negatives for your x's, sometimes all positives. And it just depends on the equation. If it's very far from going through the origin here, then you might want to be graphing over in this direction over to the far right. Now, in order to generate the table of values, these are the x's that we're going to put in place of x in the equation. So we're going to go 2 times each x plus 1. So the first calculation, we're going to put negative 3 in place of x here. So we would do 2 times negative 3 plus 1. Now that's negative 6 plus 1 would be negative 5. So that means that the ordered pair negative 3, negative 5 is on the graph. And so if we start at the origin and go left 3, down 5, then that's a point on our graph. So next we'll put negative 2 in place of x, so 2 times negative 2 plus 1. That's negative 4, plus 1 would be negative 3, so we'll put negative 3 for y. So negative 2, negative 3, negative 2, negative 3 is another point on the graph. And then we'll substitute negative 1 in place of x, and that works out to a y value of negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1, this point right here would be also on the graph. And then we'll put 0 in. 2 times 0 plus 1, well that's 0, plus 1 would be just 1. So 0, 1 is uh, also on the graph. And so notice what's appearing here. It seems to be a straight line. And so next we'll put 1 in place. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 makes 3. So 1, 3 is on the graph, still in the same line. And then we'll put 2 in to get 5, and 3 in, there's the point, and 3 in to get 7. 2 times 3 plus 1 is 7. So 3, 7 up here is also on the on this graph. So notice that every single point is on, it looks like it's on a straight line. So that's what the line looks like. This is actually the graph of a line. And uh, we're going to take a look at some characteristics of this particular line, just to illustrate what uh, the m and the b represent in y equals mx plus b. So uh, I'm going to talk about first differences here in a moment, and so I'm just going to copy my table down again. And the, as long as the x's are in order, and if they're not in order, then you just rewrite your table and put them in order. And it's most helpful when they go up by 1, so negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1 to 0, etc. They're going up by 1, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And so the first differences are the differences between the, the consecutive or successive y values. So for example, from negative 3 to, sorry, negative 5 to negative 3, that's gone up by 2. And the actual calculation, if you wanted to actually punch this in your calculator, the calculation would look like this. You would take this y value here, the negative 3, and subtract from it because we want the difference between that and the number before it. And remember, when you're subtracting integers, subtracting a negative 5 is the same as adding positive 5. And so that gives you positive 2. So that's why the difference here is positive 2. So that's the actual calculation that you would do. Now the next one is uh, what happens when you're going from negative 3 to negative 1. And of course, that's going up 2 again. And then negative 1 to 1 is going up by 2 again. And so every single one, 1 to 3, 3 to 5, 5 to 7, they're all going up by 2. So the first differences are all the same. And that's a clue that it is a straight line. Uh, a linear relation. Uh, some people think that it, it's kind of force of habit. I say the word straight line. A line is it's kind of redundant to say the word straight, but um, because a line is supposed to be straight anyway. Now what these differences mean on the graph is this. As I go from the point negative 3, negative 5, which is the first one we plotted here, to negative 2, negative 3, which is the second one, what we're actually doing is we're going over to the right one and up 2. The over to the right 1 is the differences between the x's. We've gone 1 from negative 3 to negative 2. The up 2 is actually the difference, because from negative 5 to negative 3, we've gone up 2. 
And then the reason this next one is 2 is because we've done the same thing to go from this point to this point. We've gone over to the right 1 and up 2. And the same is true all along here. These are actually called rate triangles, these little triangles here. And so notice that everywhere along the graph, between successive points that differ by an x value of 1, so it's horizontally 1 here, 1 here, 1 here, all along here, you're going over 1 and up 2. Well, why is it up 2? Why are these all 2? And actually, if we go back up to the calculations here, this is the reason you're going up 2 for this particular graph. It's not always up 2. And that's because of what all the x's are multiplied by. The differences between uh, um, each successive number here, the y's, is 2 because here, if I compare, I'm multiplying 1 by 2. And here, I'm multiplying 2 by 2. So there's, a, there's an extra 2 in this calculation. That's why that y value is 2 larger. And the same thing is true over here. There's an extra 2 in that calculation because 2 times 3 should be 2 bigger than 2 times 2. And so that's why 7 is 2 larger than 5. If we take a look at an enlargement of the graph, uh, it's a, just a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about. So if I go from 0 to 1, 0, 1, sorry, the point 0, 1, to 1, 3, I'm going to the right 1 and up 2. Now, on the graph, that right one across here is actually the run between these two points, and this amount here is the rise. So in those, all those rate triangles, the rise is 2 and the run is 1. If you take 2 and divide it by 1, that means that this line has a slope of 2. And so that's what all these rate triangles mean. You're, you actually have a slope of 2 because the run is 1, the rise is 2, 2 divided by 1 is 2. And so these first differences of 2 come from the fact that we're multiplying all the x's by 2. Well, where does that come from in the equation? That comes from the, the coefficient or the number beside the x. The reason we're multiplying by 2 here is because it's 2x. So that 2 is actually the slope. And uh, so in y equals mx plus b, the number beside the x, we call it m, is rep it represents the slope. The slope is m. It's not mx, it's just m, the number. Now, the b on the end has a meaning as well. Notice that this line goes through the y-axis. This is the y-axis up here. y-axis there, x-axis horizontal. It goes through the y-axis at 1. That's the point 1 on the y-axis. Notice that point, that's the fourth point along here, is actually this point here, 0, 1. Notice that the y value is 1 when x is 0. That means that the y-intercept is 1, because y-intercepts occur where x is 0. And so that 1 actually comes from the constant on the end of the y equals 2x plus 1. That 1 is the y-intercept. So the b is the y-intercept in y equals mx plus b. b is where it goes through the y-axis. m is the slope. So that's some connections between the equation, the table of values, the graph, and the first differences. And we're going to use that on the next page to graph a couple of relations and also give them some graphs, find the equations for them. So again, uh, this number here is the slope. This number here is the y-intercept. So flipping over to the example on the next page, it says uh, graph each of the following lines using the slope and y-intercept. So we're given the equation y equals 3x minus 2. We're not going to create a table of values like we did in the previous page. We're going to use the slope and the y-intercept. This number here beside the x, the 3, the coefficient of x, would be the slope. So the slope is 3, and the y-intercept would be the number on the end. Now notice it's minus 2, so the y-intercept is negative 2. Don't miss the negative here. That belongs to the 2, so it actually goes through the y-axis here at negative 2. So we'll put a dot at negative 2. And a slope of 3, if the slope is not a fraction or written as a fraction, then it, it automatically has a denominator of 1. So we could write 3 as 3 over 1. So the 1 is the run, how much you're going horizontally, and the 3 is the rise, how much you're going vertically up or down. They're both positives in this case. So what that 3 over 1 means is we start at the negative 2, and we go to the right 1, that's the 1 on the bottom, and then we go up 3, that's the rise. And so that takes us to another point on the graph. So that means that that point is on the graph. If we want another point, we would once again go to the right 1, and then up 3, and so that's another point on the graph. And you could do that for a few, a few times until you have, I have three points here now, and so we could draw our line. And of course, if you want to keep on going to the right one and up three, then there's another point. So that's how you can use the slope and the y-intercept to graph a line. In B, 
the uh, slope would be negative 2 thirds and the y-intercept would be 4. So a y-intercept of 4 means that the, the graph goes through the y-axis right here at 4. So, we, so that's sort of a starting point. And a slope of negative 2 thirds. Now, we need a place to put the negative. And you can actually put the negative on top, or you can put it in the denominator. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I'll, I'll speak to that right at the end of example B here. I'm going to put it on top and think of it as negative 2 over 3. And uh, so what that negative 2 over 3 means is that I'm going to start at this point, and the rise is negative 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down 2, and then the 3 means I'm going to go across 3. So there's another point in the graph. And then I'll do it again, down 2, and then to the right 3, and there's another point in the graph. The reason I'm going down 2 here is because the, uh, the rise is negative. The 3 is positive, so I'm going to the right 3. If the 3 was negative, I would go to the left 3. And then, of course, uh, we can draw our line through those. Now, I said that you can put the negative in the numerator, or you can put it in the denominator. So instead of negative 2 thirds, we could write this as 2 over negative 3. You cannot write them both as being negative. If you were to, for example, write negative 2 over negative 3, that is not equal to this. Because remember, when you have a negative divided by another negative, that works out to be positive. That's equal to a slope of 2 thirds. Okay, so only one of the numbers is negative in order for the slope to be negative. Now, if we wrote it as 2 over negative 3, again, uh, the y-intercept is 4, so we'd start at 4 here. So what that would mean is you would do this. We wouldn't actually go down 2 to the right 3 to get this point and this point, although they are still on the, uh, the graph. We would instead, since the 2 is positive, we would say, well, let's go up 2, and the run is negative. So we'll go to the left 3, and so another, there's another point in the graph. And so then we would, of course, still be drawing the same line. Uh, the only difference is we're getting points up to the left here instead of down to the right. It's still the same line. In the last example here, we're given a couple lines and asked to write an equation, and we'll, we'll read the y-intercept and the slope from the graph. So A is this brownish line here, and so the first thing I would do is look down here and see that on the y-axis it goes through at negative 3. That's the point negative 3. So that means the y-intercept is at negative 3. B is negative 3. The next thing I need to do is read the slope from the graph. And so what you need then to do is to illustrate or find two specific points that you are very certain are on the line. So for example, I could use that one. And it looks to me like this is another point that's pretty exact that uh, 1, 2 is, is on the line. And so between this point and this point, I'll find what the rise and run are and, and determine the slope. So I'll start here and then go to the right one and go up. And so my run is just 1, so I'll put a 1 right there. And the rise, I've gone up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 blocks. So the rise is 5. So remember, rise over run is the slope. So my slope is 5 over 1. Of course, that just divides out to give you 5. We'll get into a fractional slope for the last one here. So using y equals mx plus b, 5 is the slope. So 5 is going to go in place of m. And negative 3 is the y-intercept, so I'm going to put negative 3 there. And then my equation would be y equals 5x minus 3. So that's how you write uh, y equals mx plus b form, just reading it from a graph. Now b is this blue line. So first of all, read the y-intercept. Uh, the y-intercept is at 6 here. That goes to the y-axis at 6. That's 5 right there, so this would be 6. So the y-intercept is at 6. And now we need to read the slope from the graph. Now I could, there's a point right there, I could go from here to here, but I've got a, kind of a lot of stuff drawn here, so instead of using that point and this point, I'm going to use this one and this one here. They're certainly both on the line. And so from here to here, you always go from left to right, and so I'm going down 1 and then to the right 2. And so my slope would be, remember, this is the rise, the vertical change is the rise, the horizontal change is the run, it'd be negative 1 over 2 which, of course, is the same as negative a half. One of the numbers is negative, so the slope is negative. So using y equals mx plus b, uh, one more time, negative a half is the slope, so it goes in place of m, and the y-intercept is 6, so we'll put 6 in place of b. 
and then that's what the equation would look like. It would be y equals negative a half x plus 6. And that's the end of the lesson.